Welcome to the uh, special Frontier Regional School Committee uh, special meeting tonight, February 28th, 515 at the Conway Grammar School. And we'll turn it right over to... Well, we're well, reviewing the budget, but okay. there's a... Okay. It's usually handed... To okay. Sorry, you just opened it. <coughs> Let's open the meeting, Bill. Oh, sure. Okay. Let's you go. You want to take over from there? No, she can go. Where sure. do they go? Bro. All right. It's all yours, Judy. Who's on first? <laughs> um, so, um, the second page of uh, the handout is sort of a summary of the major changes um, within the budget. Um, so that um, you can see some um, changes in the salary area. Um, there are increases that are in there for steps for teachers that they would get for moving up the salary scale. There is a, uh, an amount that has been placed as a placeholder for potential um, negotiations and what that might mean to the budget. Um, we had to move some offsets from school choice and circuit breaker back into the local budget because those two funds were, um, you know, a little closer to the edge than we wanted them to be. So that's um, that increase there. The non-union uh, non increase is um, basically looking at um, people who are on hourly contracts. And next year is an interesting year. It is a 262-day work year. And usually you figure out a work year for a 12-month employee by 52 weeks times five days, 260 days. Because of leap year day and some other day that I can't remember, it's 262 next year. So um, we had to do that um, shift. In the administrative area, there's some projected increases, um, some cost share changes, and putting the business manager's salary back into the budget in a salary line. If you remember when TMS came in, we took it out of the salary line, put it in contracted services. This just puts it back into that line. So if you look down at the operational changes, you will see that um, there's a little increase in the cost share um, for Frontier uh, this year, about two percentage points from 33 and change to 35 and change. Um, so that's why that increase is there. Again, finance and administrative services, um, there's that decrease. That's the shift from contracted services back into the business manager's um, salary line. Um, some other just kind of small uh, increases here and there. There was a requested increase for um, instructional hardware that um, we've um, put up to the side for right now. Um, there's an increase for software, just some licensing and some programs that are needed uh, at the high school. Transportation um, was a significant increase in the bid uh, when it was open, so that represents uh, that increase. Athletics uh, is step increases for coaches and increase in athletic transportation because that also came in higher. Um, some anticipated increases in utilities as well based on what we're um, hearing from folks around uh, gas, electricity, et cetera. Um, network telecom is slightly decreased because there's a reduction in licensing needs. Retirement contributions is um, some estimates based on anticipated retirements. Employee insurances allowing for some plan changes. It is not an increase to the overall health or dental insurance. The Hampshire COG is actually uh, holding fast to those rates. But this just allows because there are retirements um, and new people coming in and anticipating that people might take different plans than the people who are leaving the district. Um, little increase in liability insurances, that's uh, for the vendor that we use, and then some anticipated changes in placements um, that has increased some out of tuition, uh, out of district tuitions. So the overall projected operational changes is 4.45%. So the net change to the entire budget is 3.78%. Um, the next page is the cherry sheet, uh, um, homage to back in the day when they used to mail it to us and it was on cherry pink paper. I did a little cherry pink for you. So, um, you can see chapter 70 is up uh, a little bit in the governor's budget. We anticipate that the legislature will increase it further. That's been the tradition. Um, there is a significant move on the part of the legislature right now to fund the new foundation 
recommendations at a faster speed than the governor. The governor has put out a seven-year plan, which people don't find to be acceptable. So the legislature, there are, I think, three bills, two in the House and one in the Senate right now, looking to push that, that needle forward. So we'll see where that all comes out. Um, regional school transportation, as you can see, the uh, governor's budget has decreased that reimbursement rate significantly. Um, your school choice receiving tuition is down uh, a little bit, so your estimated uh, receipts are down a touch. Uh, if you look on uh, the estimated charges, school choice sending is down, so that means more students are staying at Frontier, which is a good thing. And charter school sending is also down a little bit, which means, again, more students are staying at Frontier, which is a great thing. Um, so uh, the net, as you can see, uh, is a decrease of about $121,000 in revenue. Um, page four is just kind of an overview of who's where in terms of school choice, where uh, the receiving students are coming from, how many students, what grades they're in. Uh, the number of students that you're sending, where you're sending them to, and what grades they're in, and then the charter school students who are going out, how many are going to uh, various charter schools, and um, what grades they are in. So that's that. The next uh, several pages is the line-by-line -line budget. Uh, TMS is a great proponent of transparency in budgeting, so we use a methodology called All Funds. So you'll see there are two blue columns uh, in the budget. The one on the left represents the current budget that you have. The uh, right-hand side represents the net budget that you would be looking at. The pink column just shows all of the expenditures, and particularly for salaries and for employees. It shows you what the actual cost of those <coughs> are, regardless of whether you pay them through your local budget or you pay them through grants or other revolving accounts. And um, if you go to, like, for example, page seven, you can see some of that, uh, that uh, thing. If you look at, for example, special education teachers, you'll notice that the all funds budget is 379.241, but the net to you is 237.680 because there's close to 60,000 <coughs> coming out of Circuit Breaker and there's close, and there's 82,000 coming out of the, uh, SPED um, IDEA grant. So you can see how those offsets are. We just believe that this is full transparency so you can see how this all works on the back end. Uh, and I highlighted some um, cells within that in terms of uh, salaries in the classroom area because if you go on to page eight, you'll notice that there are some lines that have been zeroed out. And that's because um, the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has requested that, that we change the coding for certain teachers. They no longer want us to use function 2310 for salaries. They want us to use it for more for stipends, et cetera. So those people have already been moved um, into the function before 2305, and that's just uh, an accounting thing that is expected to be implemented this year. So that's why um, that change is there. Um, and again, more of the same on page nine. You can see some classroom assistants uh, who are being offset by uh, special education revolving accounts. So you can see what the all funds number is and then what the net is at the local level. Uh, and that's pretty much, um, you can see line by line what the percent difference is, either up or down, uh, all the way through the budget. And when you finally get to page 16, the bottom line is there. So the um, proposed budget, local budget for Frontier is $11,466,415. And then you can see that's an increase of 417,961, or 3.78%. Questions? How am I doing, Bill? Doing fine. All right. But please, the next time, don't make these numbers any smaller. Uh, yeah, it did shrink them a little bit. I will, uh, by Monday, they'll be in a bigger print. How's that? Even with the cheaters on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, Bill. I'm at two and a half, and I have to squint a little bit. What about it's a lot of numbers to cram into smaller. a few pages. We're going top. <laughs> All together, we can tell a story. <laughs> Okay, so the next session um, has to do with the assessment allocations. Um, 
So the first uh, page shows you how that is calculated versus enrollment. October 1st is the sort of big day in which uh, enrollments are taken, and that's the number that the department uses to determine all of this along with the Department of, of Revenue uh, moving forward. So you can see what the totals are by town on um, October 1st from 2014 to 2019. Um, and you can see what that means for um, the assessments uh, to the different towns as well. You can see uh, the enrollment year that uh, is dropped off in the calculation um, and what those changes are as well. Oh, and we have assessment to the towns and it looks like one of them I should have brought a sell out so you could read it a little more clearly. So let me just get to that. So the total assessment to the towns um, is eight million three uh, three seventeen three oh seven. The amount of variance that you can't read because I didn't pull the sell apart enough. I apologize for that, but I'll give you that number is three hundred eighty five thousand eight hundred fifty dollars and one cent. So, um, so that's an increase of four point six. You can see the chapter 70 uh, numbers plugged in. You can see uh, E&D plugged in and the regional transportation uh, plugged in as well. So, um, and that's how we've gotten to the bottom line there. The minimum contribution comparisons, again, you can see down at the bottom and probably fill you could probably speak to Conway's issues better than I have because you've really dug into that. So I don't know if you want to comment on that. Um, yeah, uh, the, the, the problem with Conway's... So what page are you on, Phil? So this is 19. page 19, 20, 21, and 22, really. But the the breakdown of the assessment by town is, 20, is page 21. Yeah. And when you look and you see that the, the percent difference is just in the... the the beginning of that little breakdown from operating budget assessment fiscal year 19 to this year's proposed budget operating assessment um, and, and you look at just the num numerical difference and you see Conway at 133, Deerfield 40,000, Sunderland 4,000, Wheatley 18,000 um, and so that a budget goes up total $197,000 for the entire district and 133,000 of that is Conway's responsibility, which on its face seems impossible and um, is terribly unfair. Um, uh, yeah, the, so the thing about it is that Conway's net worth went up almost 5% this year. And um, the other towns barely moved the needle. And so that causes, it will, it will, and I didn't realize that Chapter 70's foundation, the way that they calculate our school budgets when you're in a regional district, depends so much on uh, how much each town is worth and relative rates of growth. And so it's not just that our growth was almost 5%, it's that their growth were all at 1%. Um, and so that, all of those factors together, they, they sort of recalculate the foundation of uh, the, the district every year. And we moved way up in the rankings so that we're paying almost, when you look at the number of sending students and you, you see that Sunderland's, we're, uh, Sunderland is asked to pay uh, 1,119,000 to the district. We're at 1,020,000. And Sunderland sends how what double the students that we do more than that. So <clears throat> it's your turn to start paying for those kids. Well, and we did for, we did it in Waitley for years because of the four, because of the five year average. It's, right, Bill? It's absolutely correct. But do you know what accounts for that big increase in valuation? So I'm told it's the uh, the uh, Trans Canada paying for their dam again and the Comcast paying for the, the their whatever and the reassessments that that they did that um, I don't think we that, have that a new house in Conway from last year yeah, yeah so it, it, it's on the ground. but 
But these are the numbers that the state gives you on the cherry sheet, and that's yeah. that. Yeah. And you call up, and they say, these are the numbers. They're automatically generated. They're, 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 people don't influence the creation of those numbers anymore. And, um, uh, yeah, so, so, but they all, you know, presumably it's a one-off thing. I mean, we can't, we, we can't, as a town, have growth 5% every year when we have no septic, we have no water system, we have no ability to attract businesses. And the, um, but, but we went up in value this year. So the state says you owe more. And, and those numbers sort of go directly to the assessment be, before you even get into the budget. So, and when you take out that 5% growth that we had, when you take out that whole part of the equation, we'd be looking at something like a $40,000 increase instead of a $133,000 increase. Um, which would put us right in line with, you know, a 4% a set, whatever. So instead of 4%, we're at 12% because... Well, you could tell them it was 15 until we did something, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and we worked... Was at 15 and change <clears throat> until, we, and we, until we did some stuff. But I, and I was really shocked because from all accounts, this was looking to be a fairly... Um, Good budget year, I thought, especially compared to what the future may hold. Um, and 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 the 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 what what our budget the, the parts of it that did increase were really depressing. When you look at what the governor proposed and what we have to go with on the transportation number, mm -hmm. that in, in a, a year of record budget surplus for our state, that our transportation reimbursement is cut almost in half, at the same time that our transportation costs go up by more than what our reimbursement is. Um, and that's, so that's a 200 something thousand dollar swing, more than that, $300,000 swing, which I thought was just brutal and completely unexpected. Um, and the other big increase was the insurance, the, the, the reserve of the insurance. I thought, you know, I thought, wow, 0% increase in insurance, that's gonna look, but, um, I, I actually did check on this too. I spoke with multiple people about what they're, because they, they still have to put keep some by law for changes in plans and what's in a, what's in a, and it turns out that five percent is actually the wise, rec recommended sort of number. Um, and it is it is compared to our turnover of teachers this year. Yeah. So we have to be prepared that each teacher would take on insurance as we with the turnover in teachers. And so you got a budget for that. So there might be savings. I mean, within this, there might be savings. And that is probably, you know, um, the subcommittee did, we kind of breezed right over it, but the, the subcommittee did um, recommend that we put in $200,000 of E&D. Now, E&D hasn't been certified, but um, the numbers that we're trying to get certified put us at, Judy? Put us at 546. 679.71 that has been submitted to the DOR. There's still some back and forth that it's going on. We've actually enlisted the help of Tom Scanlon to get us to Over. that place we need to be. So um, hopefully within the next couple of days, I know that uh, Andy Paquette was going to be talking to Tom this afternoon um, about where that stood and to try and see there's some sort of reconciliation with with cash that the DOR is still looking for some information. So if we get that, we'll certainly submit it as fast as we can. That um, that number is pretty close. I don't know the percentage off the top of my head, but that's, that 546 is pretty close to the 5% that you're capped by law. You can't, regional school district can't keep any more than 5% of their budget in E&D. So you start from the 546 and you work your way down. We chose to t take the $200,000 down, uh, and we had left in a reasonable cushion the same size that we had last year and we've got some money aside because we've got the, the some of the capital things going on some of the little <coughs> things there's some very little little items in the capital proposal that we're go we, we're going to propose to the committee that they pay from out of e and d so they don't become part of the budget you know a couple thousand here a couple thousand there for a lot of the little projects that exist in that in the larger the larger capital plan so some of you will be coming forward with that at some point in time, using some more of the END, it's not like there's going to be 246 or 346,000 left in END because we've got some plans for the rest of it. But this is all that the subcommittee felt comfortable with it, 
applying towards the assessments, it was a 200,000. Right, and it's the uh, amount of 4.95%, so you're, yeah. right, you're right at it. So, you know, I, I, when I saw the, the numbers for Conway, I thought, you know, this town's 252 years old, 253, and we've never said no to a school budget, and this is tempting fate in history. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I just, we're fourth, though. We're fourth in the town meeting list. If the other three say yes. You um, better say yes. Yeah. We don't yeah. have to say yes. It doesn't matter if we say yes. It does matter. It absolutely positively matters, but not in a big scheme of things, but in the, um, I was just going to say a little scheme, mm. but um, just in the overall support of team kind of playing. It, 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 it's very unfortunate, and it's, I don't like looking at these numbers, and I'm really glad I'm not going to be the one standing up there taking the fire, but <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's what a it is. It's a difficult concept to understand when you tell somebody that your budget's going up 3.8, assessments are going up 9.8. They go, what? Mm -hmm. How is that possible? Because the formula is a huge, it's, it's the factor, not just a huge factor in all this, it's mm -hmm. the factor. And all the elements, all the component parts of that formula, we have no control over any of those. They're here. Here's your foundation budget, and then you work up, work off of it from there, and that's that's why Phil is tearing up what's left of his hair because dude, <laughs> it's nothing. There's nothing you do about it. The growth factor in Conway is what it is. It generate it gives them an assessment. It is a good budget year. You know when you talk about you thought it was going to be a good budget year, Phil. It is a good budget budget year. It's a bad assessment year. Happens to be this time for Conway. That's and that's that's the hard thing. That's what it, it's going to be the responsibility of the eleven of us. To, to try to explain that to Tommy and to people the difference between budget and assessment because they don't they're never the same once in a great while they come close but they're never they're never the same for factors that are not within our control and, and I thought the budget was very responsibly been prudently put together I, I have no fault with anything in it um, especially when you consider what the overall number is and how much of that is the transportation that we had to absorb, then it's really There's virtually modest. nothing left if you take the transportation swings out of this. Yeah. One way up and one way down. Take them out of it, there's nothing. It's, you know, so you couldn't ask for anything more as a budget to, to and then except yeah. for. You want to go through the rest of these? Let's go through the rest of these pages. Sure. So if anybody has any questions. So I think, you know, we've pretty much done, um, you know, the assessment business, um, pages, you know, 19 through 22, basically just lay it out in different kinds of arrays so that you can see how, how the assessments are looking. On page 23, again, I apologize uh, for a crowding issue in a column, so let me give you a couple of numbers. The Conway Regional Transportation Assessment is $54,729. And the Waitley number is $38,283. Again, I apologize for those cutting off by Monday. That will be cleaned up. So we have to move the, uh, the gross budget, not the assessments at this point. Correct. The assessments are left. Mr. Chairman. To do with it. Yes, Mr. Decker. I'd like to move the, the annual F20 budget. Of eleven million four hundred and sixty six four fifteen. Second. Does anybody else have anything they want to share? That's on page nineteen. Anybody else want to share anything? If not, all in favor? Opposed? Staying? Questionable. Mm -hmm. So moved. Sad. Transportation budget. Well, it's, up, it's included in that figure. Oh, it is. Right there. But oh. I don't know. But I'm Don't we use that? That's the only one on the agenda. Don't but 99,000 is so the regional transportation. Sure. Why is that number there? Do you have any questions uh, yeah, from the audience? We just got one question. We got a question. Hmm. Do we, don't we usually vote a, a transportation number separate from a regular budget number? Yes. And why aren't we doing that? We, so <laughs> I we're not fast. actually voting the 
but this is the viewing of the budget. Mm -hmm. and we're voting to bring this. I mean, I guess you're voting to bring this budget forward to a vote Tuesday. The Tuesday. Budget. It's not like the official vote to accept the budget. So I'm, I don't know what, to what formality this vote is compared. So I'm kind of yeah. I, I, you know, I get see what you. I'm saying because I know that on that one you have to be specific to the numbers to yeah, each one. Match, so we break it all out for the towns. But right now we're just saying. We're comfortable with this budget with to move forward to the hearing. We want yeah. to give some time between. That's why we have this meeting. Tonight. Doesn't regional transportation cost us more than ninety nine thousand two hundred forty three dollars? You yeah. took the governor's number. No. That's reimbursement. That's the reimbursement. That's reimbursement. Re re so, yeah. did we yeah. take the right number? No, I took the bottom line number. No, no, no. I mean, but is it more than? That's the it's, governor's number. That's the revenue. Governor's given us ninety nine and change. Right. Oh, per chair. Last year was one hundred and seventy nine and change. So is that the number we voted on? We voted on the number. The number you just voted on includes ninety nine three forty three yes. and not one eighty five nine twenty four. So aren't we supposed that's to? That's cost versus revenue. Yeah, the cost is actually two twenty two. How are we supposed to? Oh. We can't go. It's going to be higher than 432. The numbers are number small. Yes. I know. I got to fix it. <laughs> hey, you want to borrow mine? I got two and a half. I got progressives. So, after the hearing, on Tuesday, we can't vote. If it's on the agenda. Why not? Are we going to vote on the budget? Are we going to sign the thing? We can break out the transportation number. Separately for Monday. When we do the assessments, because we're going to be doing the, we have to eventually vote what the assessments are going to be to right. the four towns. Right. And we do that. Yeah. And that's when all those numbers will gel. Yeah. But this is the base budget is is eleven million. Right. Four sixty six four fifteen. Yep. And. Uh, okay. So can we go higher than this number? We did that one year. Didn't but we pass. can. It's okay. Oh yeah. Okay. This, yeah. This is just the. Correct me if I'm wrong, though, because you get the, the seasons on this. But this is just the reviewing, the first viewing of the budget. There's no real. Well, we used to call it. We, we used to call it once upon a time the tentative budget, for tentative FY20 operating budget, right. and then we we we'd vote the final one later. Right. So I guess tentatively, where the vote is tentatively telling the towns that this is the budget we're moving forward with, and please come to our. Because um, if this is if this is the final stop on the train, then what's the point in having a public hearing? Right. No. If no. there's no no ability for you guys to input to well, us two, next Tuesday, they they Tuesday night is, more and this is the reason why we're having the special meeting is to give notice to the towns, exactly. give them more time, because we did condense our budget schedule. Because we were at the Whaley Finance Committee meeting, Judy and Darius and Bob and I the other night, and we didn't even talk to them because I had because you I wouldn't give them this right. Right. because you guys hadn't voted on. I didn't right. give them any numbers. Mm -hmm. We were in and out of there and. Less than 30 seconds. So, but question, budget. if we're giving this to the towns to see, and yeah. we're giving them the number 99, but it's actually 200 and something. No, no, no. No, no, no. The 99 is the reimbursement, reimbursement number. It just shouldn't so be, where's it shouldn't the, be true the number? last number, I guess. Is yeah. what the true number is on page 12 in minuscule type under transportation function 3300, and that is $432,000. So we did see, not include thing, that number in tonight's yeah. vote that we just took. Numbers. Yes, that is we did. Bottom that's line. part of the eleven. Okay. That's yeah. part of okay. the eleven. Then I'm yes. good. That's that Thank number you. of one hundred and eighty-five thousand increase on transportation. Yeah. No, as long as it's included in the number, yes. I'm good. Thank you for clarifying yeah. that. Yeah. No yes, I think these numbers, the two hundred thousand and the ninety-nine, are negative numbers. Okay. Tuesday, okay, Tuesday night is the public right. hearing, okay, and after the public hearing, 19. we'll be voting mm -hmm. as a group I think for those oh, okay. negative numbers mm -hmm. on Tuesday okay. night. Right? Mm -hmm. Unless you yeah. choose to do something yeah. else. You I can, get what you could also saying. pause and, and hold yeah. the vote. And they must have fudged that. But hopefully we'll have a good crowd there Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah I just want to I just want to make sure all that the, that these numbers all jive out, because there's they'll ferret them out. There, we, uh, we have some... Finance committee people who are smarter with this stuff than we are. This is so if we, if we made a boo boo in here, they'll find it, and they'll and we'll find we'll know about it. So I just want to checking so to make sure they're all there. I'm writing in my notes to make sure we're writing an outline to how to do the vote to each one, so we're not figuring out that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And this has sort of been a, a I don't know what. How you describe the process this year? But it, it doesn't seem as though the other seven of you have had much ability to input on the, the, the bones of this budget. So you know, all, we, all I can ask you to do is take it between now and Tuesday and look at it. And if you've got some issues with it, 
talk to a budget subcommittee member or, or we'll talk about it Tuesday. But you really haven't had, and I apologize for you only having four days to look at it before you ask to vote on it again. But that's just the way the whole thing played out for a variety of reasons. We'll blame it all on Mark and Judy, and then we'll Absolutely. go from there. But that that's, you know, it is what it is. And the right. fan, you know, like the, like I say, the way the Finance Committee wanted it, the stuff to, to look at the other night, and we gave, gave them nothing because I wasn't, we weren't about, Darius and I talked about it before the meeting, I'm not going to give you numbers that haven't been voted on yet. Because if you guys decide to change those numbers, what am I supposed to tell them? So it didn't tell me. And realistically, within the timeline, we have until next Friday to be 45 days out for the first town first meeting. Time. We, so we have the two Monday. They have the Tuesday night meeting, but we gave ourselves a couple days when we scheduled the thing for snow and and final adjustments. I just want to say that because it's not like I don't want anybody ever feel like they're forced to hand. We could always mm -hmm. um, convene a meeting on Thursday and do a different voting. You know what I mean? It, it, so you always have that option. You never should be forced because of the timeline. It is condensed, but there is time. You know, we have a, you know, a week. Um, yeah, you can even go to the Friday, I guess, with the review in 45 days, as long as the town. Judy, <coughs> on page uh, 19, mm -hmm. the excess and deficiency money and the regional, can those all be shown in negatives so they actually, people realize that they get subtracted from the items above? And I guess uh, it's a revenue analysis. No, those so are revenue. No, those are positive. Well, that's, all, that's all positive. Those are all, yeah, I'm not sure why. The E and D came out. Well, the you, there may be a formula issue again. I'll take a look at that. I'll take a look at it. Sure. It's confusing. Yeah, the E and D line one. can't be right. Yeah. yeah. Something's uh, something's amiss in formula land. So I'll uh, work on. We'll work on that. Because if you make them negative numbers, it's not going to add up to a little. Yeah. Well, I was trying to add it up, but I turned my machine on to see. Anyway. Okay. I'll pick, we'll make sure that gets fixed you for Monday. Out. Or for Tuesday. Does anybody else have anything else? And this will so go out to the. We'll email, we'll email these to the um, town administrators of each town so they can disseminate it. And so I'll ask you to send it to me once this meeting adjourns. Well, you're going to fix it. It's all right. So we'll, we'll price it out first thing tomorrow morning. Yeah. The one question that I had is. is um, in the unlikely event that the state or somebody comes through with more, they're, they're talking about more transportation, they're talking about more Chapter 70, and it's possible that it happens this spring, it's possible that it happens before town meetings. And so what, what, what's, how does those that are Those are revenue problems that we'll, we'll just vote to reduce the assessments, mm -hmm. if that happens. Right. You'll set the budget and vote the assessments. If we get more revenue, you can vote, you can vote to reduce the assessments. Right. But they don't have an impact see, on the budget. Yeah, you won't see the House 2 budget until sometime in April. And then you probably won't see the Senate budget until late May. And last year, the governor didn't sign until July. So, you know, like that's the problem. So basically, that, but, that, sync with town meetings. but that becomes what, that's what your E&D is. So last year, we came forward with the governor's budget. Okay, we came forward with conservative numbers. And then those numbers get inflated. And that's where we get the E&D to then push back. So the end, part of that E and D is actually the difference in the new Chapter 70 formula that will come out later because we know that there's going to be more money, barring cri you know big crises in the state. We're going to you're going to see more Chapter 70 money. You're going to see more transportation money because the governor is always more is conser more conservative, um, and so you know that's part of that. I mean, you could say fifty thousand of that two hundred thousand dollars of E and D is actually the adjustment from last year of. Yeah. What the state eventually provided. It takes a while for it to filter. I know you want to try get. I know you want to get. But if you want to get any ten percent, well, uh, you can see what that. You I, can always I, bring it up. And I was actually told. I was actually like told that the governor's numbers for transportation were so draconian that t towns all across the state are pretty much howling, and that um, th that that there is a possibility that they they might do something about that outside of the normal budget framework sooner rather than later in time for this year's. Thing that, that there's a lot of call for that to be happening by towns with all the WAP don't have any transportation, so that's a hard that's a hard hill to climb. Boston could care less about transportation costs. Well, not they, a they care school. about regionalization, but they don't want to pay for regionalization. Right. Anything else, board? Move Will we to adjourn? adjourn. I'm good. All in favor? Have a safe ride home. <laughs>